This week I had planned to go outside and do some testing on the William Collins Junior Field Lure and put it up against my knife, which I'm calling the Daily Grind. And you can see the differences between the two. This is a taller blade, more of a sheep's foot type blade. So this is great for utility work. It has a longer section in here for the multi-grind. It's full flat ground, and then it has a small secondary grind, which is a Scandi, which is about, it's about 12 degrees per side, is what the angle is. This knife is about the same thing, around 12 degrees per side, but there's a secondary grind here, and you can see where that, where that plunge starts for that secondary grind. So here is a true Scandi, the steel stays full thickness, where like I said on mine, I brought it down as a full flat, and I have no plunge line. Everything just tapers in. You can see it's got a very, very nice distal taper where it just gets gradually thinner all the way up to the tip. There's also differences in the handle. My handle is quite a bit thicker. This is quarter inch micarta. And this is three eighths inch micarta. But the problem is it's been raining every day. I haven't had an opportunity to go outside and actually test these. For me to bring equipment outside to record in the rain isn't going to work. Now for the past month or so, it's been really dry. So we do need this rain and I'm glad that we have it. <clears throat> now, I haven't shown these two knives yet, but these are two knives that did influence my decision to make this knife and it influenced the way that I made it. That's these two Civivi Vision FGs. This one has carbon fiber scales and an S35 VN blade. This is Ultim with Nitro V. Now, one thing you notice, this is not a straight blade. That is a continuous curve. So if I take a straight edge here, you can see how that's a continuous curve. And you also have the angle, it's the upswept angle. So if you're cutting or doing food prep, you can cut on the cutting board and your hand stays clear. And the whole knife blade can contact the cutting surface without the handle getting in the way. That's not true on most knives. Usually the handle gets in the way and you only get about the front half of the blade can make contact with the cutting board. So that's what you see on here. It's a continuously curved blade, and you can get to that back edge with the handle still clear. Junior Field Lure, the handle's clear, but you see that's a flat blade with a little bit of belly. But from here up to here, it's flat, then you have the belly. So there are, there are many differences between these two knives. This is eighth inch, AEBL. This is 5 seconds of an inch thick, 01 tool steel. So it's probably gonna be either this weekend or next week that I'll get outside to do the outdoor testing of these two knives. Another knife that contributed to the inspiration for this knife is the Canadian belt knife, which is a fixed blade. And that also has an upswept blade. And it has kind of a unique handle design that comes up. And that also keeps the handle clear so that the full length of the blade can go down and contact the cutting surface. I don't have one of those, but maybe one of these days going forward, I'll make one. What I do have is I have a cheap cold steel you know, knockoff of a Canadian belt knife. They're like 10 bucks. Okay, other projects coming up. This knife has made it on the Saturday Stockman Stampede before when I initially got it and I straightened out one of the blades and used my knife flush and cleaned up the pivots and got the knife all ready to go. It does have one issue. You can see here, it's very thick behind the edge. I mean, feeling this thing, I wouldn't doubt this is probably about 30 thousandths of an inch thick behind the edge. So what I have to do is do a regrind on this main blade. The sheep's foot blade isn't too bad, so I'm going to leave that alone. 
and the spade blade is also okay. So as far as these two smaller utility blades, I'm gonna leave them alone. But this main blade, the clip point, that needs to be thinned down quite a bit. I'm not happy with that at all. So that'll be another project coming up. And I also have a Bear and Son large Barlow. Not this one, I have another one with a bone, bone covers and a carbon steel blade. This one is wood with stainless steel where it's the same thing, really thick behind the edge. I mean, very thick. The edge bevel almost looks like a, a knife with a scandy grind, it's so thick. So that one also needs to be thinned down. So these are some other projects that will be coming up on my channel. And like I said, I had planned to do an outdoor video, but with the rain, I haven't been able to. Okay, one more thing that I'll have coming up. I'm gonna have some multi-tool modifications coming up in the near future. So that's gonna be it. Now you have an idea of what's coming up ahead on my channel. Like I said, I had planned to get outside this week and do some testing on these two knives. But with the rain, that didn't work out. So hopefully I can get that done next week and get some more videos up comparing these two knives, the strengths and the weaknesses of both of them. I'm gonna say, alternating back and forth between these two, I do like my knife better as an EDC knife. It does the everyday tasks that I do better than the William Collins knife for two reasons. One, it's got that sheep's foot blade, which for me is incredibly useful. Two, the handle is quite a bit thicker. And of course, I shape this to fit my hand perfectly. Nobody else is gonna make a knife that fits me perfect, except for me. So this is just absolute perfection in the hand. Very comfortable. The way it's tapered, you can get a pinch grip on it. You get a pinch grip up here if you just wanna use the main, the main portion of the blade. No matter how you hold it, it's comfortable. You can get it in the palm of your hand. I have the back of it rounded off nice. A lot of knives, you'll see there's a point down here where this comes out, which looks nice. I think it, it's really attractive on the fixed blade knife, but it doesn't let you get into different grips. So if I wanna bear down on something and use that tip, I can, I can bury this in the palm of my hand and everything is extremely comfortable. There's no sharp edges to dig into you or bite. Same thing with William's knife. It's all rounded off nicely. The one thing I want to do to it is chamfer these two front edges because I can't get it. If you get a pinch grip in here, your thumb is hitting there. It doesn't sit there smoothly and that will create a hot spot. So that's the one modification I want to make to this knife. And it's probably good. I'll do that this weekend before I do the outdoor testing. That's going to be it for this one. We'll see you next time.